Okay, would you agree? Exceptional people are by definition not normal. Yep. Thank you, Helen. Yep, there's a quite a strong yep from the back left corner. Thank you, Helen. Excellent. Exceptional people are not normal. They're exceptional. And Samson is going to be an exceptional kind of man. He's going to be an exceptional guy. A standout hero for God and God's cause amongst the people of his generation. He's going to stand out, so he's not going to be normal. In fact, he's going to be a great hero amongst the greatest heroes of Scripture. He's going to be a man and a half. Do you want to be his pastor? <laughs> the guy is completely abnormal. By God's grace. No one who's done great things in this world was ever going to settle for just being normal. Exceptional is what's needed. For leading ordinary people through great challenges. And Samson lived in days of great but invisible challenges. Remember that from last time? I better do it again. No. You've got the tips. Fantastic. Always go on YouTube, always check it out. Um, just to make sure I haven't gone too far. Um, here's a guy who was living in a time when people didn't realise how bad things had become. And Samson was the guy who was going to draw the line in the sand and then defend it. Alone! With no soldiers, no army, alone. One man, jaw on the bass, well, you know the rest of it. Drawing the line in the sand. Dealing with apparently invisible challenges to everybody else. Living when the prevailing culture was to appease lifestyles and ideologies riddled with sin. Sin that most people were simply oblivious to. And in days of compromise like those, Samson particularly needed distinct features that made him stand out, that set him apart. If your devotion to God makes you seem odd in a compromised society, not your own personal oddity, because you're odd, but because of your devotion to God, then it seems like you're doing something right, doesn't it? And from the start, God's decision, not Samson's, not his parents, was that Samson should be subject to a Nazarite vow. It wasn't just that he was a hairy Herbert. I mean, everybody noticed he had a lot of hair. Just in my own defence, my own barber is shut at the moment for redevelopment. Um, they're redoing the place, but I will get back there. Okay? You could see the guy was different, set out, set apart. Not because he was an oddity, but because of his devotion to God and the pattern that that took. We'll get to that later. What we're looking at overall is Samson, a flawed hero. Right? That's the series. And what we're looking at today is what sort of home raises a hero for God. What sort of home does that? Not a perfect home. So no, nobody's allowed to feel guilty. Okay? No parental guilt is allowed in the room. Right? There is no, therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, called to God for His purpose. You can't go wallowing and all that stuff. It'll make you a worse person and you won't be happy. And neither will I. Because you'll bite me for what I say to you next. But, what we are doing is looking at what sort of flawed home is the sort of home that raises heroes for God. Is that relevant? The people who stand out at times of great compromise, when the line needs to be drawn and defended, so that others can see it and see where their appeasement has gone and come back to God.